In this video, I'll be making a balance board as a Christmas present for my niece. First, I need to make a mold, and I found a piece of OSB which I can use for this. Regular viewers will know that I often make plans for the things that I build, but not this time, although I did know roughly what dimensions I wanted the board to be. I'm drawing a line down the center of this board as I'll need two pieces, and then I'm going to draw an arc, and I'm just doing this freehand pivoting at my elbow. That looked good, but I did make a few tweaks at each end just to make the arc a little bit less pronounced. I used the jigsaw to cut out the first arc, and then I can use that as a template to mark up the second so that I can have a matching pair. And they matched up pretty well, but by putting them together and using a belt sander, I can get them to match up better and also smooth over the edges and get rid of any tear out left by the jigsaw. Here I'm marking out where I want to drill some holes, working from the center outwards and spacing them apart by about 80 millimeters, although there was really no need to measure them out. And then I used a 30 millimeter hole saw bit to drill out the holes through both boards at the same time. As soon as the pilot bit pops out the other side, I can then drill through from the other side to get nice clean holes and avoid blowing out the grain of the OSB. Once all the holes were drilled, I then trimmed off some of the excess at the bottom of these boards that won't be needed using the plunge saw. I needed to find some scraps of wood which I can use to space the two boards apart to create some structure for the mold. I set up a stop block at the mitre saw and then cut pieces to length. and I can secure them in place with a couple of screws at each end and I'm adding a piece in between each of the holes that I drilled earlier. I've got some thin 4mm plywood panels which I salvaged from some fitted wardrobes that we ripped out of our bungalow last year and this is what I'll use to make the board itself and here I'm ripping it down to what will be roughly the width that I want the board to be. Then I took a measurement around the mould to figure out what length I wanted the board to be and I can cut the pieces to length and I managed to get three pieces out of this one board. Because this plywood has some horrible old red wood stain and finish on it I need to do some sanding so that the glue will adhere to the faces of these boards better. And then I applied lots of PVA wood glue and spread it around making sure to get good coverage all over. And then I can sandwich the boards together and I made sure to face all of the faces that had that old finish and stain on them facing inwards so that I have the clean sides of the plywood at the top facing up and the bottom facing down. I can then start clamping the boards starting in the centre and working outwards and this is going to form the shape of the board. This process is called bent lamination. This is only the second time I've ever done bent lamination, the first was when I built this headphone stand. I'll link to that video in the description box below if you want to check it out. Bending three 4mm boards at once was a little bit tricky, I had to use quite a lot of pressure, particularly to clamp down the boards at the very ends. Once all the F-clamps were added I decided to add a couple of ratchet straps around the whole assembly. That's just going to help add clamping pressure in the middle of the boards so it's not just around the edges. It was pretty cold in the workshop, about 5 degrees Celsius, and that's too cold for PVA glue to cure properly. So I took it indoors overnight and the next day brought it back in. And I was excited to get all of the clamps off from what currently looks like some kind of abstract hedgehog sculpture to find out how my bent board turned out. So at the moment this is 12 millimeters thick and I fully expected to laminate either one or two more sheets to either the front or back of this to make it rigid enough but actually I'm surprised at how rigid it is already. It can actually support my weight okay. As you can see 
So I'm tempted to leave this exactly how it is. Um, I think it's going to be fine. I did some final sanding of the faces at 120 grit and then finished with some hand sanding also at 120. I can then cut clean edges at the table saw and this was a little bit of a tricky cut due to the board being curved. I also had to remove the crown guard because it would have gotten in the way. This could alternatively be done with a hand plane which would be a safer option. I'm not one to brag but there isn't a single gap from end to end here. Uh, I fully expected there to be a few gaps to fill and I would have done that using a mixture of epoxy and some sawdust but this looks pretty flawless to me so I'm happy with that. I think the fact that I didn't get any gaps is testament to a few things. Firstly, the high number of holes that I put in. Secondly, the amount of clamps I used. And thirdly, the fact that I worked from the center outwards on each side because that compresses the glue starting at the center all of the way down and should squeeze out any air gaps in theory. And it seemed to work well. Here I'm trimming the short edges at the mitre saw and again a little tricky and again a hand plane would be a safer way to clean up these edges. Again surprisingly no gaps here, really nice glue up. I sanded the edges at 120 grit. I decided to add some curves to the corners. I cut away most of the waste at the band saw and then refined the shape of the disc sander. And I decided to route a round over just to ease over all of the sharp edges and to make them more child friendly. After some final hand sanding it was time for finish. I had some child friendly acrylic paint and here I'm mixing up a nicer green colour. And Rhea, my fiance, is going to help with the decoration here and she suggested doing dots. We kept the colours for this quite minimal, just green and yellow, mainly to complement the decor in my brother and his wife's house, but also because they are big Norwich City fans. And Rhea added these white highlights to the dots. For the opposite side I suggested doing chevrons, so after finding a centre point I masked up some lines at 45 degrees. And I wanted to do alternating colours but leave some of the wood showing too, so I had to put a bit of thought into which areas to mask up. After a couple of hours, once the paint was dry, I added a few coats of water-based varnish, applying it in the direction of the grain and being careful to wipe away any drips at the edges. And in between coats, once dry, I denibbed spraying on a little water and then sanding with 400 grit before wiping away and applying the next coat. I think it got three coats in total. So what exactly is a balance board? Let's find out. This project took less than a day to complete, probably five or six hours, and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. That's it for this one, please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos, and if you'd like to help support the channel, you can find links below to donate on PayPal, or you can sign up for Patreon or YouTube channel membership and receive early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching.